Ignore the untidy desk here, this is pretty normal. But I'm going to do an experiment where we're going to measure the braking distance of this car. And I'm not allowed to do it in the minibus. Apparently it's unsafe to get a load of kids in the minibus and practice braking. So, instead we're just going to use this driving simulator. I'm going to get up to a certain speed and then I'm going to hit the brake. When I hit the brake I'm going to start stopwatch. I'm going to stop the stopwatch when I've stopped. I'm going to record that time up there. Now when I'm doing this with students, the students will be driving, the students will be doing the measurements. There'll be multiple stopwatches, all running at the same time to make this process quicker. But I'm just doing this by myself, so off we go. Uh, I've modified the game slightly so that there's no other cars on the road, but unfortunately I can't get rid of all of the cars. And the AI racing driver car still zoom past me every now and then. There's not a lot I can do about that. Right, I'm going 10 miles an hour, so... Oh, I couldn't even measure that, that was too small. I've got 0.67. <coughs> Seconds. Let's do it again. 10 miles an hour. That's 10. Here's my stopwatch. Just 10 miles an hour. And then. Yeah, 0 0.62. It's probably a little bit less than that. My reaction times aren't as fast as some of the younger people's will be, I'm afraid, because I'm old. Here we go. Let's go for the last one for 10 miles an hour. Now we're going to assume a few things. Oops. We're going to assume that our deceleration when the brake is pressed is constant. That's of course not going to be the case. But we're going to make that assumption so we can calculate the stopping distances. 0 0.39 that time. Let's go for 20 miles an hour. So yeah, I'm going to assume that the deceleration is constant and use the mean time to calculate what that stopping distance will be. I've got the initial speed, and I'll have the final speed of zero, I'll have the time, and I can find the displacement. Um, the thing we won't have is the acceleration, so we'll just use the note A equation. Right, so <clears throat> let's go up to 20 miles an hour. The speedo is in the bottom right of this screen, so I'm not going to use the dial good because the dial looks like it's calibrated slightly differently. Right, so 20 miles an hour. Bit faster, bit faster, bit faster, bit faster, bit faster. Stop the stopwatch too soon, I felt that. Let's try it again. Straight up. 20 miles an hour. I've got 0 0.78, I'll record it. I think it's actually a little bit longer than that. 0 0.78 seconds. Let's go again. I'm going to pause this and pick us up later after we've got lots more data. So I'm busy collecting my data. and You'll see that I've um, kept my car in first gear the whole time. I don't want to change anything if I don't have to. So the engine's going to start really shouting at me now, going 40 miles an hour in first gear. So, one minute and plus, or one second and fifty. So you can see the data starting to pile up now. Uh, at some point, I'm not going to be able to go in first gear anymore. It's going to reach a maximum speed I can go in first gear. Oops. When I reach that speed, I'm going to have no choice but to, uh, but to gear up. So 164. I'm going to keep on filling this in as fast as I can go. There we are. I'm going to have no choice but to change gear here. So put my foot to the floor in first gear in this car. I can't remember what this car is. I reach 44 miles an hour. I can't go any faster. So I have to gear up. And I'll make a note of that on my table, but I have to gear up and I'm braking from second gear, just in case the engine braking is going to be different, because I can't dip my clutch. I suppose I could, I can actually go with this to dip the clutch, but we'll, we'll go with it anyway, we'll see what, see what it looks like. So, 50 miles an hour. 
to O2. And we'll keep on going even though I'm having to gear up into second gear. And I'll make a note of that on the table. Still building up the table of data. Going for 70 miles an hour now. That's the national speed limit. So first gear, get off the ground. Second gear. And you see if I can get to 70 in second gear. Oh, yeah, you can get to 70 in second gear in this car. That's good. So we get to 70 and turn on a little bit. Uh, get up and get straight bit. Here, no straight bit. It's 70. Two, 45. I think I stopped that a little bit early, but that's okay. That's why we're taking repeats. First gear set off. Second gear. The national speed limit. We're, we're going to go 80. Whoa! speed limit. In second gear, we can't do it, we're going to get to 75, so we have to gear up to third gear. Oh, hit the wrong button on the stopwatch. Oh no, we're going downhill. Right, let's go. Oh, this thing is sluggish to control. Let's get up here with this tunnel is because it should be reasonably straight, reasonably flat in the tunnel. Come to third gear. Should be flat in the tunnel. Surely you don't dig a tunnel that's a funny angle. Okay, so let's do 80. I've got all the data I want, I've gone up to 80 miles an hour, and uh, just in case you're interested, I was driving a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Goldwyn, uh, which I decided was probably the sluggish and slowest car in this racing game. Right, let's, uh, let's exit out of this game then, and quit. Okay, so that's the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Goldwyn, these data using Excel. Save me the hassle of doing graphs by hand. So the speeds, let's just enter the speeds in miles per hour. In fact, we can zoom in on this, I should think. Yeah, you can go away. There we are, let's zoom in on this. So speed, what have we got? 10, 20, 30, 40. Use the formula, I'm just gonna enter because it's quicker. For me at the moment. Right now, time one in seconds, time two 
in seconds times three in seconds. So you're not going to sit there and want to watch me type all this, so I'll pause it while I type it. And there is all that data entered straight off the whiteboard. Now I want to calculate the mean time. So we're going to use the equals, add, spell it right, average, those three. I'm going to leave the speeds in miles. No, I'm not going to leave the speeds in miles per hour. Because I want the distances to be in meters. So I'm going to, have to convert the speeds into meters per second. Speed in meters per second. Now let's think about the conversion is. Google it. One second. Let me look it up. Well, apparently one mile an hour is about 0 0.447 meters per second. So that's going to be equals that times 0 0.447. That gives me the speeds in meters per second. Right, now then the um, initial speed, the final speed is going to be zero times, this is the mean time here, in seconds, and uh, we want the displacement. Well, we're going to remember the equation, the equation which was mean displacement divided by time, I should say displacement divided by time, equals, uh, that's the average velocity, so that's the same as u plus v over 2. So what we're going to do is S equals U plus V over 2 multiplied by T. Now given that V is 0, that's just going to be U T over 2. So we can plug that in here for breaking distance in metres, spelling breaking correctly. Uh, breaking distance in metres is going to be the velocity times the mean time, divided by 2. And there's our lovely uh, set of numbers, breaking distance in metres. I can plot a graph, and I'll do it with speed in miles per hour, because that's something when you're driving that you become more familiar with. Uh, there's an older version of Excel, so see if I can remember how to plot a graph. And, well, would you look at that? That's pretty good. Let's get rid of some of this gumps that we don't want on this graph. On the x-axis, uh, horizontal axis going up to 80. So on the x-axis you've got your speed. On the y-axis you've got your uh, braking distance. And if I go into here and choose a second order polynomial, it should give me a pretty close match to a quadratic which is exactly what we were hoping. Now the fact that we had a gear change, in fact we had two gear changes, because the 80 mile an hour I had to do in third gear, doesn't seem to matter. Our graph still shows a pretty convincing quadratic. That is to say the braking distance is proportional to the square of the speed. That makes sense. That makes sense because the amount of kinetic energy that was being carried by the vehicle was also proportional to the square of the speed. And given that the braking force multiplied by the braking distance would be the amount of work done, which would be equal to the kinetic energy, because that's what we're trying to get rid of, if we assume the braking force is constant, the braking distance should be proportional to the kinetic energy, and therefore should be proportional to u squared. That's what we expect. That is actually what the graph shows for this particular car, in this particular situation. 